This is a Sikha from the Kutusikhis, Khalik Zayin, Parsha's Vik or Sikha Gimel. And the topic of the Sikha is that in this week's Parsha, we learned the Pasuk that speaks about an Ayla of an Oif, of a bird, and it says that the Kriva Kain Elam is Beach, the Kain should bring it to the Mizbeach, Umalak is Resha and Dumalika, the Hiktir Hamizbecha, and the Kain should burn it on the Mizbeach, but before that, the Nimza Dame. Al Kiram is Beach, Venimza Dummy, she squeezed the blood on the wall of the Mizbeach. And we learned the teaching of Rashi on the words Venimza Dummy, where Rashi explains what these words mean. And there are four parts in the Sikha. The rebel number one asks six questions on Rashi. Number two, present the key to answering the questions, which the key is to understand what's really bothering Rashi. And then number three, based on this, on understanding what's really bothering Rashi, the Rebbe will answer all six questions. And number four, present the Yenishal Torah in Rashi. On the Pasuk that teaches about bringing a carbon oil from an oil from a bird, where it says, that the Kayin should bring it to the Mizbech, and do Malika, and he should burn it on the Mizbech, and before that, he should squeeze the blood on the wall of the Mizbech. So Rashi quotes the words, and he explains, this is Lashain Mitz Apayim, which is a Pasuk in Mishle, and it speaks about squeezing out a person's anger, which then causes a fight with someone else. And it's also the Lashain of Ki Ofes Hametz which is the Pasuk in Yeshaya, where he's asking Moyev to help the Yidin, and he's saying that they should understand the situation of the Yidin, because they too have lost everything. And he says, Ki afes hamets, that they no longer have the sheep and the flock from which they would squeeze out milk. So we see that the Nimtza is a Lashen of squeezing out. And then Rashi explains, Koyvesh Beis HaShchita, he presses the part where he shechted the bird, Al Kir HaMizbeach, onto the wall of the Mizbeach, V'hadam Mismatz V'yerid, and the blood is then squeezed out and runs down the wall of the Mizbeach. Now, simply, Rashi is coming to translate the word venimtza, which is a word that is not mentioned in the Torah until now, and it's not a regular word in the Torah. And therefore, he explains what the word means. It's l'shain mitzapayim, and the l'shain of ki ofes hametz. However, we have to understand, and there are six questions here. The first question is, what's the connection between the explanation of how the mitzvah was done, that kevej beis hashchita al kerem is bech, v'adam is matzah v'yerid, that comes immediately after this teaching of Rashi, to the translation of the word v'nimtza, that because of this connection, therefore Rashi teaches them in one dibar amaschon. What's the connection between these two teachings? L'chayra. If Rashi is coming to explain the manner in which the mitzvah is done, and it's not connected to the lotion of a nimtza, so then he should have taught it in its own and in a separate dibar amaschon. From the fact that Rashi teaches both of these teachings, in one Dibar Maschal shows that they're connected. And so the question is, what is that connection? That therefore Rashi teaches them in one Dibar Maschal. The second question is, why does Rashi need to bring two proofs for the meaning of a Nimtza and he doesn't make do with just one of them? The third question is, why does Rashi specifically choose these two Psukim where we find the word that's similar to a Nimtza? We find this Lashin in other places as well. The fourth question is, adding to the third question about why Rashi chooses these two psukim, so moreover, in Mishle, from where Rashi brings the Lashen Mitzah Payim, so over there Rashi explains that the Lashen of Mitz in the Pasuk of Mitzah Payim is K'moi Vayimetz Tal, which is found earlier in Shaftim. If so, he should have brought us proof from the Pasuk of Vayimetz Tal, and for two reasons. Number one, it's before Mishle, and number two, because it's actually the source for understanding the word in Mishle. The fifth question is, in the two proofs themselves, Sarashi so first brings the proof from Mitzah Payim, which is in Mishle, and not the Pasuk of Ki Afes HaMetz, which is earlier in Yeshaya. And the sixth question is, in the Pasuk in Mishle, it says earlier, in that Pasuk itself, before the words Mitzah Payim, it says twice the Lashen of Mitz. It says, Mitz Chalav Yetzi Chema, U Mitz Af Yetzi Dam, and only afterwards it says, U Mitz Apayim Yetzi Riv. And Rashi specifically brings the third time that it says Mitz. Why is this? So now we're going to present the key to answering all of these questions. So the explanation of all of this is as follows. Rashi over here is not just coming to translate the word Venimtza. That's part of what he's doing, but it's not the only thing that he's doing. But rather, he's also coming to answer a question that there isn't the Pasuk. So besides for the question about the translation of the word Venimtza, there's also a question in Havana. There's a question in the understanding of the Pasuk over here that's tied into the word and tied into the translation of the word Venimtza. 
And the question is, v'nimtza is a lashen nifal. So there's something called lashen pail, which means to do something, and then there's lashen nifal, which means something was done. So, for example, to throw something would be lashen pail, and to say that something was thrown is lashen nifal. So v'nimtza means something that was done, lashen nifal, which means that it's as if it happens on its own. Meaning, in other words, over here, what it would mean is that the person does a number of things, and as a result of one of those things, which are done for whatever purpose it's done, so it also it causes something else, which is v'nimtza damai, meaning that the blood becomes squeezed out on its own onto the kir mizbech, through one of the other things that the person does, either the v'hikter mizbecha or through the malika. And if so, it's not understood, there's a difficulty, which is, we know from earlier, that by a carbon oil from a behema, over here we're talking about a carbon oil of an eif, so we know that by a carbon oil of a behema, there are the avedas of shechita, and then the zrika of the blood on the mizbech, and then the aktara. So there's shechting the animal, there's throwing the blood on the mizbech, and then there's burning it on the mizbech. Therefore, the question is, we also find the avedas of shechita and aktara by an oil from a bird, just that instead of shechita, by a bird, there's malika. And then you have the Akhtara afterwards. However, what about the Aveda in between? The Aveda of Zrika. We don't find by an oil of a bird an Aveda that's similar to the Aveda of Zrika of the blood on the Mizbech. And so the question is, where is that Aveda by a carbon oil of a bird? According to this understanding, that there are two questions on the word venimtsa. Number one, what is the translation of the word? And number two, that it's written in a Lashen Nifal, which creates a question about where is the Aveda that's similar to Zrika by the carbon oil of a bird, we can now answer our first question. So therefore, because of these two questions about the word venimtsa, so after Rashi brings the proofs about the Lashen of venimtsa, he explains that the Nifal of venimtsa comes through an Aveda, a Pu'ula of a person, and a special Pu'ula. The pula of kaivish that the person presses the base of shchita al kerem mizbeach v'adam esmatz of which is similar to the avayd of zrika of the blood on the mizbeach. And as we're going to see, we're going to go on to explain how all the other questions are also answered, and then we're going to wrap up and complete the answering of this first question because we still have to complete the answer to the question. But generally speaking, the point of the answer is. The Rashi is addressing two things about the word venimtza itself. Number one, what is the translation, and number two, that it's an alosh and nifal. And Rashi is telling us the translation of the word venimtza, and also that even though it's written in a Lashen Nifal, it comes through a Pu'ula. And as we'll see how that's connected to the proofs that Rashi brings. Now we're going to move on to answering questions number two, three, five, and six. So question number two is why do we need two proofs? Question number three is why these two proofs and not others? Question five was that ki office amates should be the first proof because it appears first in Yeshaya, which comes before Mishlei. And question six was this is the third time it says mitz in that pasuk of Mishlei. So why does Rashi bring the third time that it appears and not the first time? So according to this that we explained, it's understood why Rashi chooses specifically these two proofs. Because these two proofs emphasize that the meaning of a nimtza is connected with the pool of a person, which is the pool of kvisha pressing. So because over here Rashi is not just coming to tell us the translation of the word venimtza, but also how it's a pu'ula, so he uses these two proofs. Because these two proofs don't just tell us the translation of the word venimtza, but they also show us how venimtza is connected to a pu'ula, to an action, and it's not a nifl. So we're going to begin by explaining why Rashi doesn't bring the first two times that the word mitz appears in the Pasuk in Mishlei. From the beginning of the Pasuk in Mishlei, where it says mitz chalav yetzi chema, that from milk comes butter, umitz af yetzi dam, and from a person's nose, blood comes out. So from there, there's no proof to our discussion that venimtza is in a way of kaivish beis hashchita. Because both chema from chalav and dam from af don't come through a pu'ula of kvisha, of pressing, of squeezing, but rather through hitting or striking. And as we'll see later, why it's important that it should be specifically kvisha. Moreover, not only don't they come through the pula of kvisha, of squeezing or pressing, but sometimes they come by themselves. Chema swims above the chalav on its own, and sometimes dam comes from itself, from the af, as we see. And therefore, Rashi specifically brings the end of the pasuk of mitzah payim riv, that through squeezing out, through pressing out a person's anger, then it creates a fight with another person. Because there the mitz is in the same manner as koivish beis ashchita. Through squeezing and bringing out the anger, then riv, then it creates a fight. But if a person doesn't bring out their anger, then it won't lead to a fight with another person. However, this proof alone is also not enough. 
So now we're answering why Rashi needs two proofs. Since the mitzvah apayim is with a polo that's not a physical action. It's not a physical thing, which means that it's not like kevish beis which is a physical action. And therefore Rashi also brings the pasuk of ki afei There in the pasuk of ki afei it means the chalav and the chema the milk and the butter, which are squeezed from the tzaynu bakar. Rashi says clearly that it's talking about that it comes through squeezing, through pressing. Now, this is number one, in action. And number two, the milk doesn't come through hitting, but rather through actual squeezing, just like the kevesh beis hashchita. So that's why Rashi brings this second proof. Now, why does Rashi bring this proof second? Why doesn't he bring it first, that appears first, or maybe just bring this proof? So the explanation for that is that, however, this proof from ki afei sameitz alone is also not enough. Because there we can learn that the mates isn't emphasizing the action of squeezing itself, but rather it's a description of the wealth of the tsaynu bakr, which results from squeezing the chalav and chama from them. So the emphasis in the pasuk over there is not that it's done through squeezing, but rather the emphasis is about the wealth of the tsaynu bakr. And it mentions what's their wealth, that chalav and chama are squeezed from them. As Rashi explains over there, that he was telling Mayav to be kind to the Yidin because they too lost their wealth. And he brings it out by saying, Ki ofis ha-meitz. And Rashi explains, ha-meitz shalcha, your mates ashrecha uchvaitcha. It's referring to your wealth and your honor. Shahayilcha, that you had, alidei tzaincha of karcha, that you had through your sheep and your flock, shat meitzatz mehem, chalav v'chema, that you squeezed chalav and chema from them. So therefore, it's not talking about the act of squeezing, it's just saying that it comes through squeezing. And therefore, Rashi also has to bring, and actually as the first proof, the proof from Mitzapayim, where over there, Mitz means the actual action of squeezing. It's actually talking about Mitzapayim, squeezing out anger. It's just that we need to show that it could also be referring to a physical squeezing, a physical pressing, and therefore it brings the Pasuk from Yeshaya. So this is the explanation for how Rashi brings both proofs, and in the order that he brings them. Both Pasukim bring out that we're talking about Kvisha. The advantage of the Pasuk in Mishle is that it's talking about the Pu'ula of Kvisha, whereas the Pasuk in Yeshaya is really talking about the Nifl. And the advantage of the Pasuk in Yeshaya is that it's talking about a physical Kvisha, whereas the Pasuk in Mishle is talking about a spiritual Kvisha. So the main thing is to bring out that it's talking about an action of Kvisha, which we have in Mishle. And Yeshaya just supports that it could also be referring to a physical Kvisha. Now we're going to move on to answering question number four. So moving on to the reason that Rashi doesn't bring the proof from Shaftim, from Vayimetz Talmin Agiza, which is a physical action. The reason is because in the same Pasuk, before the words Vayimetz Tal, it says Vayazar Es Agiza. The words Vayazar Es Agiza mean that he squeezed the Giza. He squeezed the fleece of wool. As Rashi says over there, Loshin Machpesh, like over here, Kavish. So therefore, since there was already Kvisha, so it's understood that Vayimetz Tal, which was afterwards, doesn't refer to the pula of Kvisha, of and with the Giza, the fleece of wool itself. Rather, refers to the coming out of the dew from the Giza, as the puzzle concludes, Vayimetz Tal, meaning that the dew came out, Mina Giza, from the fleece of wool, Meloi HaSeifel Mayim, a full pail of water. So over there, the word Vayimetz refers to the water coming out of the fleece of wool, not the act of squeezing and pressing the wool. And therefore, this is not a precise example to our Pasuk, where the Venimtza Dame comes to emphasize the Pula of Kaivish Beis Ashkita. We don't have the Kaivish over there. The Kaivish is already said at the beginning of the Pasuk, in the word Vayazar Sagiza. So from there, we can't learn at all that we're talking about the Pula of Kvish over here. Now we're going to move on to answering a side question, and that is, if Vayimetz Tal in Shoiftim doesn't mean the act of Kvisha, so how does Rashi bring it as a proof, as a source for understanding the words Mitzchalov, Mitzaf, and Mitzapayim in Mishle? So we explain, because it doesn't refer to the pool of Kvisha, we can't bring it as a proof for our Pasuk. But we could bring it as a proof for the Pasuk in Mishle, because our Pasuk is talking about the pool of Kvisha, which you don't have in Vayimetz Tal, but not so in Mishle where Rashi comes to explain not that it's referring to the pull of Kvisha, but rather the Tzad shava of the three things the Pasuk says. Rashi is bringing Vayimetz Tal to understand what it means Mitzchalov, Umitzaf, and Umitzapayim, all three. What is the Tzad shava that all of them share? And this is not going to be in the type of Pu'ula, in the Chal of Af and Apayim, because as we explained, it's actually a different Pu'ula by each of them. 
but rather it's during the result of the pula. The pula which takes out the mitz, the tzad v'shav is not in the pula. The pula by each of them is different. The way chema comes from cholov, the way dam comes from an af, and the way a fight comes from anger, it's all different. So what do they have in common? It's in the result of the pula, which is the mitz. Each of them has something that comes out from something else. And for this, the proof from Shaiftim is a good proof, since the Vayimetz refers to Tal coming out of the Giza. So too, all three times that it says Mitz, it's referring to these things coming out of something else, which is exactly what it means also in Shaiftim. Now, based on this, we could return to our first question about why Rashi teaches two things in the same Dibur Maschal, because according to this, it's also understood why Rashi explains Kaivish Beis Hashchita in the same Dibur Maschal and in continuation to the proofs, since it's connected to his teaching. Because what is his teaching? He's also coming over here to explain that the Venimsa is through Kvisha. So he's telling us what Venimsa is and that it's the pool of Kvisha, because both of those things are needed for us understanding this Venimsa, understanding how it replaces Zrika. So we have to understand what the word means and how it's a replacement of Zrika. And so that's exactly what Rashi is explaining to us over here. He's telling us the meaning of the word and that it's through the pool of Kvisha, which is brought out in the proofs that Rashi brings. Now we're going to move on to asking a question on the very basis and premise of this Rashi, and it's connected to our first question. So, however, it remains difficult. The difficulty is, why is it relevant to emphasize that the Mitzvah Adam is specifically through Koivish Beis HaShchita? Why that action specifically? Which, therefore, as we explained, Rashi has to bring specifically these two Psukim as his proofs. Why does it have to be emphasized that the Mitzvah Adam is specifically through Koivish, the act of Kvisha, and not through some other Pula? The point is that it has to be a pu'ula. But why specifically the pu'ula of kaivish? It could be a different pu'ula. So we can answer this according to what we explained. We already explained the general idea, and if we look at the details, we'll see how it answers this question as well. So since Rashi learns that the nimza is in place of and similar to the zrika, the haza of the blood and the mizbeach, so it makes sense that the pu'ulas are similar. So it's not just that there needs to be a pu'ula, but also that the pu'ulas themselves should be similar. And that's specifically when it's done through kvisha. Why? Blood which comes out through striking, like for example by mitzaf yitzidam, it's not in a manner that the blood is constantly coming out through an ongoing pu'ula. The striking causes the start of the blood coming out, which then comes out by itself for a while. Not so by liquids that come through kvisha, like for example by milking a cow, where the continuous coming out of the liquid is a result of the ongoing pu'ula of kvisha. And therefore, since the avoid of nimtzadame is instead of zrika hazal, which comes entirely through the pu'ula of the kayan, the Kayin is doing the whole pull from beginning to end, so therefore Rashi learns that this is also the way it is done by Venim Tzadamai, that it's through an action which is an ongoing action, which we find by Kaivish Beis HaShchita, specifically by the action of Kvisha, and not some other action. And so this is the reason why Rashi says that the Pula is specifically Kvisha, because not just that there has to be a Pula over here, it has to be a Pula that's similar to the Zrika of the Dam. And just like the Zrika from beginning to end is an ongoing Pula of the Kayan, so so too we're going to say that the Venim Tzadame is through an ongoing Pula, which we only find by the Pula of Kvisha. From Yenish Teira, which is in this teaching of Rashi, it's known that the Ramban says regarding the Avedis, which are done with a carbon, which a carbon is machaper for a person, that a person must think, Kichata Lelikov, that they sinned against Hashem, Begufay of Venafshe, with their body and with their nefesh, Veroy Leishi Shafik Domei, Visarif Gufay, Lulo Chesed Abeirish Lokach Mimenu Tomorrow, if not for the kindness of Hashem, that he took the carbon in exchange. So we see from here that it's a nafshi is the thing. And so this is the meaning of why we are makriv, the chaylev and dam of the carbon, the fats and the blood on the mizbeach. And avoid this adam, what this represents, it's the tainug, which is the chaylev, the fats, and the koch, the passion, which is the dam, which one has to be makriv, meaning one has to dedicate to Hashem. Therefore, at the conclusion of the first type of karbonus, which is taught in the Torah, which is the carbon oila, which also a carbon oila is machaper, on a person's Averis, on a mitzvah sasei, and also on a lava nitik lasei. So Rashi teaches that by venimtza dame, which is the zrika of the blood, which is the ikar kapara, it's the main thing of the kapara, that the inyan of kapara of a carbon is accomplished by the inyan of mitz, of kvisha, which represents the eskafia and bittel of one's mitzvah, like squeezing, pressing. And then there is adamus smats of a yerid, that the blood pours down the wall of the mizbeach, meaning that the kach in physical pleasures is squeezed out and leaves the person. 
And therefore Rashi brings the Loshin Mitzapayim. This is because in the union of Mitzapayim Yetzi Riv is expressed in the Remez, the general Teichen of Achet, and the manner of Tshuva and Kapara for Achet. So in this Pasuk of Loshin Mitzapayim, we're going to see how it expresses the general Teichen of what Achet is, as well as the manner of Tshuva and Kapara for Achet. So the explanation for how we see this in the Pasuk of Mitzah Payim, so Razal say regarding Kas, anger, that Kol HaKayis Ki Ilu Oived Aved Zara. Anyone who gets angry, it's as if they're doing Aved Zara. As the Altar Rebbe explains in Tanya, that at the time one is angry, so Nistalka Mimenu Amuna. The person in that moment is not believing in Hashem, because if one believed that it's coming from Hashem, then they wouldn't be angry. Meaning what this is saying is that the union of anger, of Kas, expresses being cut off from Hashem. Ki Ilu Oived Aved Zara. And this is really the Nakuda of all Averis, as the Alter Rebbe also explains in Tanya, that this is so, since through every Avera, one becomes at the time cut off from Hashem, similar to how this is through the Chait of Aved Zara. So Kas captures this general union of Chait, of being cut off from Hashem. And this is the deeper explanation of the end of the Pasuk, where it says, Mitzah Payim, it concludes, Yaitzi Riv. It's telling us over here the Toichen of a Chait. Through an Avera, there becomes a Riv with Hashem. There becomes a separation from Hashem. It's just that since by anger it's emphasized and more pronounced, unlike by other Averis, as we see that it only says Ki'ilu Eved Aved Zara by certain Averis, even though it's true by all Averis, so therefore it's written by Mitzapayim because it's emphasized over there. So that's how we see the Teichen of Chet expressed in Mitzapayim, Yaitzi Riv. It brings about being cut off from Hashem. How do we see the idea of Tshuva and Kaparo? So when a Yid brings a carbon and does Tshuva for an Avera, then too it's Mitzapayim Yaitzi Riv. Over there you have this mitz, this pressing, like we said, the skafian bittel. It's just that then it's in a manner of kovish kasei, and also margaz yitzateval yitzahara. It's not against Hashem, but it's against the being cut off from Hashem. And in general, this is also by the tshuva for every avera, where a person is kovish and crushes the yitzahara, which brought the person to go against Hashem, to go against the rutzin elyon, and become cut off from elikus. And through this, the tshuva, this is also Yetziriv, but here it's a Yetziriv with the Yetzirah. And so we see in how this Pasuk of Mitzah Payim Yetziriv, it brings out both what is the Teichen of a Chet, as well as what is the tshuva, what's the manner of the tshuva. And this is why it says Mitzah Payim in the plural, because there's the Kas which brings to a Riv with Hashem Rachman al and then there's the Kibush Kas to separate oneself from an Iser when doing tshuva and bringing a carbon which brings the Riv with the Yetzirah. So we have over here both the Teichen of Chet, which is Mitzah Payim, when you have the idea of a Payim, of anger, which really, like we said, represents all of Veris. It brings about Yetzi Riv, Rechman al with Hashem. And then we have the manner of Tshuva. How was Tshuva done? Mitzah Payim, by being Kovish the Kas, by crushing and breaking the Yetzirah through a Skafya and Bittal, and then it's Yetzi Riv with the Yetzirah. Now we're going to move on to explain the second Pasuk which Rashi brings, the Pasuk of Ki Ofei Sameitz. So however, after everything that we just explained, there could be a question, which is, since a Yid Mitzad Atzmai is not Shaykh to an Avera, like the saying of the Alter Rebbe, that a Yid Nitter will, or Nitter ken sein Obgerissen von Elikus, and this, that a Yid stumbles in an Avera, is an Indian of an Alila. It's brought upon a person from above, from Lamaila, so to speak, and therefore we say, Balidach Mimenu Nidach, that ultimately every Yid will do tshuva. So the question is, so why did there need to be the Yerida and Hester that comes through the Chait? What's the point of all of it? So in response to this, Rashi continues, Ki Afei Sameitz, which refers to the Chalav, which is squeezed from the Tzainu Bakr, meaning to say that what comes out from the Sechita and Kvisha after a person does tshuva is similar to the Indian of Chalav, which is something special that you don't have beforehand. What's the Indian of Chalav? By Chalav, there's a Kasaka Daitach, there's a thought of Teres Emes, that it should be Aser, Either because, where does the milk come from? From blood, dam neka renasa chalav within the person. Or because it's Avram and Achai. It's just that the Torah is machadish, that it's mutter. And it's not just that it's mutter, but it's to the extent that it's an Indian with which we praise Eretz Yisrael. That it's a Eretz Zavaz Chalav Advash. So there's a Kasaka Daitach in Teres Emes, that it should be Aser. And Torah is machadish, that not only it's mutter, but it's also something to praise Eretz Yisrael with. And this represents the Indian of Ishabcha, something which according to Torah should have been Asr, that the Torah makes mutter and even praises. And similarly in Ruchnius, the purpose of the Mitzah Payim Riv, that first the person did an Avera, and it made a Riv with Hashem, and then the person was Kaivish Kasei, and made a Riv with the Yetzirah, is for the Indian of Ishabcha, which is to transform the Ratatayv. 
as the Tanya explains the Pasuk, of Kol Paul Hashem Lemaneu, the Gam Rosha Ra, that everything that Hashem made was for her sake. And even a Rosha Ra, what's the meaning of the Gam Rosha Ra? That perish, the meaning is, Sheyashav Mirishay, that he should return from his Rishus, Veyasa Rasha Loy, Yoim Veerla Milo. The Gam Rosha, that what should the Rosha do? Liyoim, he should turn into Yoim and Erla Milo, Ra, his Rishus. And this Avaida accomplishes, like we say about Karbonus, a reach in Yichoyach la Hashem, a nachas ruach va Hashem. That from Dvarim Harifim, Oimichumatsim, from sharp or sour foods, Rakshahim Utbalim Umusukanim Hetev, it's just that they are prepared well, they're spiced well, Achanasum Adanim, they're made into delicacies, Lahoshev Anefesh, which represents the Avaida of Iskafiris Habcha, taking something which is Ra, Harifim Umusukim. And turning it into something good, ma'adanim l'hoshev anefesh, and all of this brings about istalik yikara dekutsu bruchu bekulu almin.